Scientists say wireless earphones that fit inside the ear are more convenient to use and therefore get left in the ear for longer, which can cause damage to the ear. Here are the details. Scientists writing in the conversation explained how prolonged use of wireless earphones can harm your ears. The article refers to research that shows it's very important to let your ears breathe. The reason for this is that earwax is more important than most people think, and it needs ventilation to dry out and slowly push contaminants out of the ear canal. Like a slow escalator system. Wearing in ear earphones for a long time could compress earwax, making it less fluid and harder for the body to expel. This compaction could also cause the body to induce inflammation, causing painful boils in the ear. By blocking the airflow, it also stops the earwax from drying out, making it sticky and encouraging buildup. This airflow block also traps sweat and moisture in the ears, making them more susceptible to bacterial and fungal infections. Earbuds also create a barrier to the natural expulsion of earwax, stimulating the secretory glands and increasing wax production. If the buds are not cleaned properly, bacteria on the buds can cause infections. Scientists say excessive earwax can cause hearing problems along with other symptoms such as pain, dizziness, tinnitus, itching, and vertigo. They suggest letting the ears breathe as often as possible. When do you use your AirPods? At work? During your sweaty workout session? Do you put them inside your lint and dirt filled pockets? Has it ever occurred to you to clean them? You should. Turns out, AirPods and in ear style earphones can get pretty nasty. Last year, Business Insider swabbed 22 pairs of earbuds to find out what kind of gunk we're inserting into our ears every day. Results showed that two of them had grown yeast and one was hosting a dirt bacteria. Imagine how much they would have found if they had swabbed more samples. Ugh. On top of harboring bacteria, in ear headphones also increase wax buildup. According to Alina Health, our ears are self cleaning, but in ear headphones can push down wax into the ear canal and prevent wax from naturally coming out, as well as cause infection and hearing loss. So, what can you do to keep your ears protected? Well, the answer is pretty obvious stop blasting the volume and just clean them. Business insiders suggest using dry toothbrushes and cotton swabs dipped in rubbing alcohol to disinfect and brush out the earwax and bacteria. You should also make it a point to clean the AirPod charging case, which can get just as nasty as the earphones themselves. Business Insider also used cotton swabs, a toothbrush, and a microfiber cloth to wipe the case, which can also host all types of germs. How often should you be cleaning your wax filled earphones, you might ask? It truly just depends on how much buildup you can take. Just don't share those icky suckers with others. It's disgusting enough to have your own gunk stuck in your ear canal, let alone share your bacteria buddies with others. New research coming out of the University of Michigan may one day improve the life quality of millions of Americans. Tinnitus is characterized as a persistent ringing or similar noise that can be heard in the ears. Lead researcher Susan Shore says that the dorsal cochlear nucleus, a region of the brainstem, is the root of tinnitus. Shore says that when neurons in this region become hyperactive and interact with each other, this generates the perceived noise. The experimental University of Michigan device tackles tinnitus via two senses. First, it plays noise and alternates that by firing a mild electrical pulse to the cheek or neck. This dual approach triggers a process known as stimulus timing dependent plasticity, aimed at resetting the hyperactive neurons and how the brain processes the senses. Tinnitus is reportedly the most common service related disability among veterans. It affects around 25 million Americans. Many learn to live with it, but for some, it can get so bad that it's life crippling. Chinese researchers have successfully grown ears for five children with microtia, using a procedure that used the kids' own cells. Microtia is a congenital deformity of the ear, the severity of which ranges from structural abnormalities to a complete absence of the external ear. The typical treatment for microtia is reconstructive surgery, often through rib cartilage ear reconstruction or silicone prosthetic ears. In China, scientists grew ears via a biodegradable scaffold that replicates the patient's normal ear. Cells from the microtia ear were seeded into the scaffold and cultured for three months. The new ears were then implanted to reconstruct ears in five patients and monitored for up to two and a half years. While the idea itself is not novel, what's groundbreaking is that the scientists were able to carry out the procedure successfully in a series of patients and had long-term results to boot. 
Even as a deadly second wave of COVID-19 ravages India, doctors are now reporting a rash of cases involving a rare fungal infection, also called the black fungus, among recovering and recovered COVID-19 patients. The infection has a very high mortality rate, and treatment often involves the removal of an eye. Here are the details. The BBC reports that surgeons in India are reporting a sharp increase in the number of mucormycosis cases in patients who survived COVID-19. Mucormycosis is a rare fungal infection that is caused by exposure to mucor mold, which is commonly found in soil, plants, and even in the mucus of healthy people. It affects the sinuses, the brain, and the lungs, and can be life-threatening in diabetics or people with weakened immune systems. The infection has a frightening mortality rate of 50% and often requires the removal of an eye or sinus tissues. Diabetics who survive coronavirus are especially at risk. Some doctors believe that's because diabetes lowers the body's immune defenses, then coronavirus exacerbates the problem, and then steroids, which help fight coronavirus, acts like fuel to the fire. Steroids reduce inflammation in the lungs for COVID-19 and limit the damage, but they also reduce immunity in both diabetic and non-diabetic COVID-19 patients. It is thought that this drop in immunity could be triggering India's spike in mucormycosis cases. Mumbai's busy Sion Hospital has reported 24 cases of the fungal infection in the past two months, up from six cases a year. 11 of them had to lose an eye, and six of them died. Most of the patients are middle-aged diabetics who were struck down by the fungus two weeks after recovering from COVID-19. A newly released scientific report casts more light on the case of U.S. diplomats who believe they had suffered physical damage from microwave weapons used by enemy agents. A panel of U.S. scientists found that the symptoms were likely caused by directed microwave devices, renewing discussions about the use of microwave radiation in 5G wireless networks. As with the difference between microwave ovens and microwave weapons, the discussions revolve around exactly how short the wavelengths in 5G microwaves are and how directed they are. A new report by a U.S. National Academy of Sciences committee has found that directed microwave radiation is the likely cause of illnesses among American diplomats in Cuba and China. Microwave weapons work in much the same way as an ordinary microwave oven. A strong electrical current is fed into a magnetron. A magnetron is a high-powered vacuum tube that oscillates microwaves to produce high-energy microwave radiation. However, in a microwave oven, this energy bounces around within the walls of the oven. Instead of containing the energy inside a box, a microwave weapon concentrates the energy into a focused direction with minimal broadening of the energy stream. This is why it's also called a directed energy weapon. AP reports the committee's finding provides the most definitive explanation yet of the illness that struck scores of government employees, first at the U.S. Embassy in Havana in 2016, and then in China and other countries. Many of the officers suffered from dizziness, fatigue, headaches, and loss of hearing, memory and balance, and some were forced into permanent retirement. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.